Hello everybody, Great on 95 is here again with more Phoenix Rain Ace Attorney. Oh my god, it's so loud. Okay. So, if you remember from the last time... Um... Excuse me. Um... We figured out that... Well, Hammer was killed before Edgeworth got in the boat, so... The only possibility that I can see is that it's Edgeworth the murderer in this photo. Of course, it was Edgeworth and the murderer! After the murderer killed Robert Hammond at 11.50, he assumed the guise of Mr. Hammond and met Edgeworth. What? Are you serious? Yes, Edgeworth won't tell us why he went to the lake that night. However, I have a hunch. That night, Robert Hammond called Edgeworth to the lake. Now, Edgeworth didn't know Robert Hammond's face that well. That's why he didn't suspect anything when the murderer took Robert Hammond's place. I'm not sure what to make of all this. L ludicrous Mr. Wright, tell us the name of the murderer, then. The murderer's name? Right. It's... Well, I don't know. Actually, I don't know the murderer's name. You don't know? Bah! Again, you waste my time. I don't know because he never told us. The murderer is the caretaker of the boat shop, the, uh, that old man. At 11.50, he was the one who killed Robert Hammond. The caretaker of the boat shop? Where did he do this? There weren't any boats out on the lake then. Why would he have to go all the way out on the lake just to shoot someone? May I suggest that the real scene of the crime was not in a boat. What? Well, where did the murder take place? Show the judge where the murder really took place. Oh god. Here? Here, of course, the boat shop where he lives. That way he could meet with the victim without anyone seeing. Objection. Do you have proof that the boat shop was the scene of the crime? Recall Larry's testimony, if you will. <laughs> Tim was searching. That night he was out on the lake in a boat, searching for something. He finds it and returns the boat. Then, just as he's starting to head for home, he hears a gunshot. He heard a gunshot, Your Honor. Even though he was wearing headphones at the time. In other words, the gunshot was very, very close by. And where would that be if he had just returned a boat? The boat shop. Mr. Wright. What happened that night on Gord Lake? Please tell the court from the beginning. Y yes Your Honor. Now, Nick, are you sure about this? Um, not really. But I think if I start at the very beginning, and I take it slow, I might just be able to figure this out. <clears throat> okay. That night. It's like us testifying. <sighs> Excuse me. It's early. The caretaker of the boat shop called Robert Hammond to his shop. Ooh. This was around 11.50. And that was when the gunshot that Larry heard was fired. After that, the caretaker put on Robert Hammond's coat. He became Robert Hammond. Then he got in the boat with Edgeworth and went out into the middle of the lake. Then who fired the pistol on the boat, Mr. Wright? Oh. Ah. Uh. I'm pretty sure it wasn't Edgeworth, so... Let us, uh, try to prove that. Of course it was the murderer who shot the pistol. He shot twice, both missed Edgeworth on purpose. Wait a minute. Y yes Why would he shoot twice if he didn't mean to hit anyone? Uh, details, details. Know this, Mr. Wright. The moment you run out of explanations is the moment you lose. Tell us why the murderer had to fire twice. Create a witness? I believe he shot twice to create a witness, Your Honor. Create a witness? The murderer lifts his pistol and fires one shot. 
That ensures that anyone who heard the shot would look at the lake. Indeed, Miss Hart did exactly that after hearing the first gunshot. Next, the murderer waits a bit and he fires again. Then, the murderer jumps from the boat himself, leaving the pistol in the boat behind him. I see. To someone looking from the edge of the lake, it would appear that one of the men on the boat had shot the other. The murderer didn't know about the automatic camera, of course. That's why he shot twice to draw attention to the boat. Hmm. Once you realize that, everything else falls into place. The boat shop caretaker swam back to his shop, and he put Mr. Hammond's white coat back on the body. He threw the body into the lake. This is where this is what happened, Your Honor. These are the events that transpired that night on Gord Lake. Bailiff, bring out the witness from before. The bow shop caretaker, quickly. Ho ho! We're winning. <laughs> Where's my? Okay, that really needs to be quiet. Um, very well. While we are waiting for the caretaker, I would like to ask the defendant, Miles, Ed bleh, Miles Edgeworth, a few questions. Mr. Edgeworth, please take the stand. Mr. Edgeworth, you heard what the defense has said? Yeah. <sighs> Excuse me. Yes. Well, why did you go to the lake that night? What Wright has said was mostly correct. Astonishingly so, actually. Yes. Several days ago, I received the letter. The letter was signed Robert Hammond. He asked me to come to the boat shop by the lake on, at midnight on Christmas Eve. He said he had something very important to discuss with me. Something important? I'm sorry, I can't say what it was. Hmm. Your Honor, sir. Bailiff, we are conducting a trial here. I ask that you remain quiet. The witness has disappeared. He isn't at the boat shop either. What? What should I do? Find him quickly. We cannot allow him to get away. Oh, God. Mr. Von Congo, your witness has disappeared. A search warrant has already been issued. Hmm. It goes without saying that I cannot declare a verdict under these circumstances. I will extend the trial until tomorrow, the final day allowed. I request that the police department utilize all its forces to find that witness. Am I understood? One more thing. Just who is that boat shop caretaker? I think his identity has become very important to this trial. I want him... I want, and I want to know who he is. Very well. Court is adjourned. December 27th, 1.22 p.m. District Court to defend at lobby number two. Hey. Yay, Nick! You did it! Excuse me, sorry. Yeah. Well, at least we got out from under that guilty verdict. What about Larry? That was something else. Even Von Karma didn't know what to do with his testimony. Larry really helped us out. Sure, once I sifted through his unique testimony. Still, he did save us. I just wish our cases weren't so down to the wire all the time. I know what you mean. Sometimes I feel like it's us on trial instead of our clients. Hey, Edgeworth. Um, uh, Mr. Edgeworth? Did, did you say something? Don't look so pained. I mean, it looks like you're probably going to get off the hook. You can try to smile just a little. Relax. I'm sorry. But I fear it's not over for me yet. W what do you mean? Right. There's something that's been troubling me for a long time now. And I don't know whether or not to tell you. Edgeworth? No, there's so little time left. I want to tell you to get off my chest. To get it off my chest, but... I can't make up my mind. What is this about, Edgeworth? It's a nightmare I've had. A memory of a crime that I committed. A crime you committed? A memory of a murder. To be continued. Yeah. Huh. 
Uh, so, Edgeworth somehow thinks he committed a crime or something, I don't know. So, December 27th, 2.11pm, Rate & Co. Law Offices. That was, what was Mr. Edgeworth talking about? A memory of a crime that I committed. A memory of a murder. I really think Mr. Edgeworth killed. I don't believe it, not Edgeworth. Some painful memory has been troubling him recently, but he'd never take someone's life, never. Nick. Yo, how's everyone doing? What do you think of my performance today? I had him swooning in the, in the aisles, huh, Maya? Swooning? Me? Oh, oh yes, I do remember feeling faint. Right on, tell me the truth. Was it love at first sight, right? It was love at first sight, right? Right, Nick? Huh? Me? I, uh, well, maybe my heart skipped a beat or two. I think you can do better than that. Come on, I saved Edgeworth in there, dude. Edgy. You guys should be bowing before me. Yeah, bow before your hero. Oh my god. Larry, you really helped out in the trial today. You did. If you weren't, if you weren't there, Larry, I'm sure Mr. Edgeworth would have been found guilty. <laughs> but seriously, Nick, that bow shop caretaker guy is pretty suspicious. But Edgy ain't off the hook yet. Way to spoil the mood, Larry. Hey, I'm just the guy sitting in the audience, you know. But from here, there, I was sitting. From where I was sitting, Edgy seemed pretty edgy. I mean, can you really know he's telling the truth about that night? Nick, I don't know. But what I do know is, I'm going to believe in you two until the end. Us two? Edgeworth and who else? You mean me, right? Nah, he means me, right, Nick? Yeah, you, Larry. Not me? But, but why you, Larry? Huh? Um, actually, yeah, why me, Nick? Hmm, <laughs> enough with the silent treatment. Nick, why do you trust Mr. Edgeworth so much? I mean, he's changed recently, true. But when we first met him, he was kind of a jerk, don't you think? You didn't know him back then. Back when you wanted to become a defense attorney. Wait, was that when you two were classmates? Yes, in grade school. They saved me, Miles and Larry. They saved me and I'll never forget it. That's why I became a defense attorney, you know. What? Hey, hey, Larry! What's he talking about? Huh? Uh, um... Uh, sorry, I kind of forgot. Hmph. <laughs> okay, Nick. Out with it. I'm going to hear this story today, and that's final. Okay, okay. It's kind of a long story, so hang in there. <clears throat> it was the beginning of spring. Fourth grade. And that is where we will end it off, folks. So, if you like what I'm doing, subscribe, comment, like it. And you, next time we will find out why... He became a defense attorney, and how they saved him. See you guys then.